In this video, I'm going to be ranking each and every mob on a tier list. That's right, no mob will be left behind. Everything from axolotls to the ender dragon. And if you enjoy this video even a little bit, then you are legally obligated to leave a like. And if you don't know, this tier list is 5 tiers. Amazing, good, okay, lacking, and bad. This is the Minecraft mob tier list. First up, we got the LA. This was a mob vote mob, and I think that this mob is actually pretty underrated. It's not super useful on its own, but if you have a huge storage system in your base, the LA can help sort out non-stackable items, which is a game changer for the redstone community. You can find the LA trapped in these cages near the outpost. The LA is basically a better bat, and it has a lot of uses, so I'll put it in the good tier. Now for the bat. This is hands down one of the most annoying mobs in Minecraft. They fly around in caves making a squeaky noise and they're next to impossible to get rid of. And if you do actually kill them, they don't drop a single thing, so it's not even worth it. While they may not attack you physically, they can leave long-lasting psychological wounds. Easy bad tier. The bee is another mob that many people don't seem to like, but I think is pretty underrated. The bee spawns in bees' nests that are attached to trees. They make up about roughly 95% of the 1.15 Buzzy Bees update and they produce honey as well as honeycomb, which has a variety of uses. If you use glass bottles on the beehive, you will get the honey bottle, which can restore some hunger points, but its main use is for crafting the honey block. Honey blocks revolutionize redstone in the way that we create flying machines. The bees will only attack you if you attack them first, which seems fair, they inflict poison damage, which can be very annoying. And once they do sting you, the bee will kind of float around and eventually die. Bees are also comically large compared to everything else in the Minecraft universe. But that might just be my eyes because I pulled several all-nighters to make this video happen, so you guys have to subscribe and smash like. Anyways, the bee's going in the good tier. Now for the horse. Horses can be a great way to travel early game. They come in all sorts of different colors and speeds, which makes them very unique. Some can be very fast, like this one, because he's black. Horses can also wear horse armor, which doesn't do a whole lot, because you typically don't fight when you're on your horse. Horses also become completely obsolete once you get the elytra, but they're a cool mob in my opinion. Amazing tier. The blaze. The Blaze is another mob that plays a crucial role in beating the game. They only spawn in nether fortresses, and without them, you can't beat the game. In order to light the end portal, you need to get at least 6 blaze rods to make 12 blaze powder for the eyes of ender. The blaze powder is also a crucial ingredient for brewing because you need to craft the brewing stand and it's used as fuel. So I'll give the blaze an amazing tier. The tropical fish are a very unique mob. Unlike the other fish in Minecraft, the tropical fish has the possibility to come in over 2,700 different variants. They were added back in 1.13, which was a pretty good update in my opinion, and they help make oceans a lot more diverse along with the seagrass and the coral. So I'll give the tropical fish a good tier. Rabbits. Some people love them, some people hate them. They can also be extremely annoying because if you ever want to catch them, they run away and you will never be able to find them. No matter how much you try and keep them captive, they will always find some way to escape. However, if anyone here loves rabbits, they'll unsubscribe if I put them in the bad tier. So I'll put the rabbits in the lacking tier. Camels. These are a relatively new addition to the game and they spawn in the deserts. It's kind of just like a bigger horse because you can put saddles on it and have two players riding it. They can go pretty quick, but their main feature is the fact that they can dash. If you time it right, the camel can jump over large ravines making it across safely. So I'll give camels a good tier. Cave spiders. I'm not a huge fan of these because they're basically just tiny spiders on steroids. They spawn in the mine shafts from these cave spider spawners, and you might think that you could just destroy the spawners. And while you can, they're always covered in a ridiculous amount of cobwebs. And cave spiders have no problem going through cobwebs. As soon as you get close, they will just charge at you and attack you. And did I mention that their attacks inflict poison damage and they're also very fast? You don't want to mess with cave spiders. I'll give them a lacking tier because they're incredibly annoying, but they are good at what they do. Chickens. Chickens can be a great source of food early game because you can one-hit them with basically anything. And if you know anything about redstone, you may have seen the classic automatic chicken cooker that gets you chicken automatically. And if you happen to consume raw chicken, then it will actually give you the hunger debuff, which is kind of counterintuitive. Chickens aren't the best food source in the game, but it's very easy to get a lot of them and make a farm early game. So I'm going to have to give chickens an amazing tier. Cod. Cod is not a good fish. The salmon is just a lot better for a variety of reasons which I will get to later, but cod is just a very boring fish. First off, it's brown, and it's just your standard fish. It's not special in any way. Bad tier. Cows. Cows are another common passive mob that you find minding their own business in a field. When you kill them, they drop raw beef which can be crafted into steak which is a great food source. They also drop leather which can be used to craft a number of things. Automatic cow farms aren't as simple or easy as the automatic chicken farms, but they're still a good source of food early game. Amazing tier. Next up is the llama. Llamas are kind of mid because they don't do all that much. They spawn near mountains and you can ride them and put different colored carpets on them to give them cool patterns. And they can also have chests equipped, but aside from that, they aren't too special. You actually can't control where they go when you ride them and they spit on you if you get angry. So I'll give them a lacking tier. Trader Llamas. These are the exact same concept as the normal llama, but they permanently have the wandering trader carpet on them. This is arguably a lot worse because they aren't even customizable, but worst of all, they have to be related to the wandering trader. So if you hit the wandering trader, then both the llamas will start to attack you. So just for that, I'll put them in the bad tier. The creeper. 
a classic mob that has been in Minecraft almost since its birth. When Notch was trying to code the pig into the game, he accidentally had a skill issue and created the creeper model that we all know today, and it's probably one of the most iconic mobs in all of Minecraft. Many people think that the creeper is really annoying because it can blow up your base and destroy your stuff, but I think that it's actually pretty cool. It has a cool design, and it strikes more fear into people than the warden. So I'll give the creeper a good tier. Dolphins. This is a unique aquatic mob that isn't meant for food, but rather helps the player travel the ocean much easier. Whenever you swim near a dolphin, you get the dolphin's grace buff, which lets you move significantly faster in the water. But be careful, because if you attack them, they will attack you back, and they do a lot of damage. They'll still give dolphins a solid good tier. Donkeys. In my opinion, the worst version of the horse. While you can equip chests to the back of it, you can't put on armor, and they're usually a lot slower. They can be used to breed into mules, but aside from that, most people don't go seeking out donkeys. So I'll give donkeys a lacking tier. Drowned. These are basically just zombies that live in the water. However, unlike zombies, they can wield a trident, which does a lot more damage than you might expect. They can deal up to 13.5 damage as a melee weapon, or 8 if thrown. It's kind of like a throwable sword that comes back to you. And if you add Riptide 3 to the trident, then in water you can launch yourself pretty far. And if you have an elytra on and it happens to be raining, then you can travel at borderline supersonic speeds. So I'll put the Drowned at a good tier. Elder Guardians. There's around three of them in every ocean monument and they barely drop anything. They are by far the worst mini boss in the game if you even consider them that. They are super annoying to fight and they give you mining fatigue which just makes things a lot better. Bad tier. The Ender Dragon. Now unlike the Elder Guardian, the Ender Dragon is actually a good boss. Many consider it to be the final boss of Minecraft but there's still much more to do after defeating it. The Ender Dragon drops a dragon egg and tons of XP. And overall the Ender Dragon is an amazing tier. It just wouldn't be Minecraft without it. Enderman. These can be found in all three dimensions, and they drop ender pearls, which are crucial to beating the game, along with blaze rods. They don't attack you unless you attack them or maintain eye contact for too long. They can pick up blocks and block by block destroy your base that you work so hard on. And then just when you try to get the blocks back, they will run around and teleport, so good luck. But I would say the endermen are a solid good tier. The Endermite. This little guy is very unique because he has a chance to spawn after you throw an ender pearl. Despite the end part of his name, they actually don't get along with the endermen. So this mob could be very useful for building the enderman farm. However, they're up there with Silverfish in terms of how annoying they are, and they don't drop anything besides some XP, so I'm gonna have to give the Endermite a lacking tier. Evokers. These guys can spawn in either the Woodland Mansions or in raids. When killed, they drop a Totem of Undying, which literally saves you from dying. After you should have died, it gives you some buffs and regenerates some health. And the Evoker has a lot of unique attacks, such as being able to summon Vexes or these Evoker Fangs. So Evokers are going in the Amazing tier. Foxes. Foxes are pretty cool and they spawn in the taiga biome. They can carry an item in their mouth and if that item is a weapon such as a sword, then when they attack things they will use that weapon. A lot of people think that the fox is one of the cutest mobs in Minecraft, but I'm not a furry. So foxes are going in the bad tier. Gas. Gas are the giant floating white blobs in the nether that shoot fireballs at you when you were just trying to have a peaceful outing. They make these screaming sounds which are actually from one of the developers who recorded their cat sleeping. Gas drop gunpowder and gas tears which are both useful in their own ways. Gas tears can be used to craft end crystals and gunpowder can be used for firework rockets and TNT. Good tier. Glow squids. This is just a retextured squid that technically doesn't even glow. At the time I thought it would be cool if it glowed, but this is not glowing. The mob vote was definitely rigged. Bad tier. Goats. The goat can be found on the top of mountains, and if you get too close to the edge, they might try and headbutt you off. If they try and do this and you tactically move out of the way at the last second, causing them to slam into the wall, they might break their horn so you can play some music, so that's fun. Aside from that, they don't do all that much. Average tier. Guardians. These are the weaker, smaller forms of Elder Guardians, but I think that they're actually better. First off, they don't give you mining fatigue, and they actually drop a lot of food and building materials. And if you make a Guardian farm, it could be one of the best sources of XP in the game. So I think that Guardians deserve at least an average tier. Hoglins. These overweight nether pigs spawn in the crimson biome in the nether, and they can be challenging to fight when you first enter the nether. However, they do drop a lot of leather and pork chops, so they can be a great source of food. So if you need a good food source, hoglin farms are ridiculously easy to build and supply you and your non-existent friends with food for the entire game. So I have to give hoglins an amazing tier. Husks. These are the desert equivalent of the zombie, and they're pretty much the exact same mob. However, the husk can give you hunger when it hits you, which can be kind of annoying. So they're going in the average tier. The Illusioner. These guys are technically not even in the game, but they're on the tier list that I stole from this nerd, so I'm going to rank them. You can still spawn them in with commands, and they're a part of the Illager family. Their main feature is the fact that when fighting them, they will occasionally summon copies of itself to confuse you as to which the real one is. They also wield a bow, which is kind of cool, but Mojang didn't fully add them to the game. I think that they definitely would have been a cool addition if Mojang would have done something with them. Average tier. Iron Golems. These big guys are made from four iron blocks and a pumpkin and have a ton of health. They can spawn naturally in a village and kind of act as a protector of the village. And if you do it right, you can have villagers around beds to make a farm to farm the Iron Golem. And iron farms can be very useful, but require a lot of patience to make. Iron Golems can also protect you, but the second you accidentally give them a little high five, he will start to hunt you down like his life depends on it. 
so you have no choice but to run or hide. Or you could be a normal person and just build up three blocks. Good tier. Axolotls. Mojang add them to improve awareness because I guess they're endangered, so they managed to become one of the most loved mobs in all of Minecraft, and it has some cool features like how you can befriend it and it will swim around and protect you. They can also be put into a bucket so you can take them with you wherever you want. Amazing tier. Magma Cubes. These are the slimes of the nether and they typically spawn in the basalt delta biome. In 1.16, Mojang added magma cube spawners inside the bastion so now they're more easily farmable. And much like the overworld slimes, magma cubes come in many different variants and sizes. However, unlike the slimes, the smallest variant of the magma cube still does a bit of damage. And if there's enough full-size magma cubes in one area, it can be hard to take out even with decent armor. Average tier. Mules. Now I know there's kids watching, but basically, horse plus donkey equals mule. They have average stats and they're not amazing like the horse, but they're not terrible like the donkey. So I'll give them an average tier. Ocelots. This is what cats used to be like before they added the village cats that we all know today. Nowadays you can't even tame an ocelot into a cat, so they don't serve much purpose. They're kinda just there when you explore the jungle, and they're pretty much useless. Bad tier. Pandas. Everyone likes pandas. And pandas are the only mob in Minecraft that have a whole genetic system. There are sick pandas, weak pandas, lazy pandas, angry pandas, and much more. It gets kinda complicated, but some people might find it interesting. Good tier. Phantoms. I can't think of a single person who thinks that phantoms were a good addition into the game. If you ever mess up your sleep schedule, then they will start spawning during the night, making everything a pain to do. It somehow won the mob votes, but the Minecraft mob votes have never been very good. But the phantom is an exceptionally terrible mob. Bad tier. Pigs. This mob is iconic and can be instantly recognized. They are an excellent source of food and you can ride them with a carrot on a stick. Pigs in Minecraft come in many different shapes and sizes, but the normal pig will always be the best. Easy amazing tier. And now we have Piglin Brutes. They're similar to the normal Piglins, but they can only be found in Bastions. Piglin Brutes also do an insane amount of damage even with full Netherite armor. But luckily once you kill them, they don't respawn and each Bastion has a set amount of them. I think they're a pretty cool mob, so they're going in the good tier. Piglins. This is the less scary version, but the more abundant form of Piglin Brutes. They are Pigmen-like, and they wield either a Golden Sword or a Crossbow. They typically spawn in the Crimson Forest, but they can spawn pretty much anywhere in the Nether. They will always attack you unless you wear Golden Armor, but if you attack them, they will still attack you. And they can also be useful for speedrunning because you can trade Gold Ingots for a chance to Ender Pearls. Amazing tier. Pillagers. On their own, they aren't too special, but if you find a Pillager Captain and kill him, then you will get Bad Omen. And if you happen to visit a nearby village, then you will start a raid. Raids are extremely overpowered, but that's for another video. Pillagers can be found in Pillager Outposts, roaming around in groups, or in raids. They're kind of the opposite of the Villager, and they're portrayed as the bad guy. But Pillagers themselves aren't that great. Average tier. Villagers. In my opinion, one of the best mobs in the game. They did get nerfed in 1.21, but they're still good. They provide pretty much any enchantment book in the game, unlimited food, building materials, diamond armor and tools, and much more. They even have their own economy that runs on emeralds as a currency. Villagers are extremely useful and come in many different variants depending on their workstations. Each type of villager has a unique type of items that it sells at a specific price. There's a lot more I could say about villagers, but this video is already going to be pretty long, so I'll save it for another video. Top of the amazing tier. Zombie Villagers. These may look like a normal villager at first glance, but if you splash it with a weakness potion and give it a golden apple, then it will turn back into a normal villager. And once this process is done, the prices are reduced by quite a bit. And if you want to, you can repeat the cycle and have the zombie infect the villager again and redo the entire curing process. Each time you cure it, the price will continue to drop until it reaches the lowest it possibly can. So for instance, if you had a Fletcher that sold you one emerald for 32 sticks and you didn't like that price, then you could do some black magic to get it down to one stick for one emerald. So for those reasons, I have to put the zombie villagers in the amazing tier. Polar Bears. These were actually a huge addition because they made up half of the 1.10 update, and if you happen to wander into its personal space or near its child, it will start hunting you down. But I don't care about polar bears too much, and the 1.10 update is just a terrible update. Bad tier. Pufferfish. These used to be just an item that you could get from fishing, but now they're an actual fish swimming around in the water as of update 1.13. When you swim near them, they might puff up a little bit and start to poison you pretty quickly. And they can deal a surprising amount of damage. I think they're kinda cool, but there's a lot of other cool mobs on this list. So pufferfish are going in the average tier. Ravengers. This is Big Guy's cousin who appears in the later stages of raids. They act all intimidating and they have a ton of health. However, once you finally kill them, they drop a saddle. And that's about it. The saddle isn't even stackable, so it just fills up your inventory. So for that reason, I'm gonna give them a bad tier. Mushroom Cows. These are a lot like the normal cows, except they only spawn on Mushroom Islands. And in addition to being able to be milked, they can also make an infinite amount of mushroom stew if you right-click them with a bowl. They're red in color and overall a pretty cool looking and useful mob. Good tier. Parrots. These birds spawn in the jungle and they come in a wide variety of colors. And if you feed them cookies, they change color. Parrots can also dance to music if there's a jukebox nearby. Good tier. Salmon. This is by far the best fish in all of Minecraft. They are a lot better than cod and they even taste better. They can drop bones as well as raw salmon. Amazing tier. 
Shulkers. This mod was added a while ago, but it revolutionized the game. Shulkers spawn in end cities in the outer end islands, and they drop shulker shells. And the shulker shells can be used to craft into shulker boxes, which revolutionized the way that we store items. And as for the actual shulker mob, it's pretty unique because it shoots projectiles that make you levitate up off the ground. Amazing tier. I even had to zoom out a bit, this duo is getting pretty long. Anyways, Silverfish. Moving on, Skeleton Horses. These ultralight horses are also kinda underrated in my opinion. They spawn during thunderstorms, and when you get close to them, lightning will strike the skeleton horse, activating the skeleton horse trap. A skeleton horse trap consists of several skeleton horses with skeletons riding them, each wearing some sort of enchanted iron armor. And once you get a skeleton horse by itself, it works similar to the normal horse. However, the main advantage to the skeleton horse is that since they're weight optimized, they aren't weighted down in water, which makes water travel a lot easier. Amazing tier. Now we have the normal classic skeleton. This mob is pretty much as recognizable as the creeper and can be recognized by non-Minecraft players. As the name suggests, this Minecraft is just a skeleton that wields a bow as its weapon. It has the possibility to wear armor and is overall a pretty iconic mob. It can be annoying in the early game before you have a shield to block its arrows, but if you can dodge its hits, it's not a big deal. Good tier. Slimes. These spawn either in the swamp biome or deep underground in slime chunks, and they come in multiple different sizes which do increasingly more damage the larger they are. And once you kill one, it splits into multiple smaller ones, and so on and so forth. And once you get to the smallest version, it won't actually attack you. It just jumps around. They drop slime balls, which can be used to make slime blocks and pistons, which are very useful for redstone. Good tier. Snow golems. These are the other types of golems in Minecraft, and are created when you place two snow blocks on top of each other, followed by a pumpkin as the head. Snow golems don't attack you, but if they attack a mob, they shoot snowballs, which don't do too much, but at least he tried. If you shear off its head, the pumpkin will come off, and it will turn into a normal smiling snowman. And since they are a snowman, if they go to a hot biome like a desert or savanna, they will begin to melt and eventually become unalive. But I'll still give them a good tier. Spiders. Spiders are one of the classic Minecraft mobs that spawns in the overworld when it's dark out. However, unlike the other OG mobs, the spider is wider and has the ability to climb walls. They drop string and spider eyes when killed, and they're a pretty cool mob. Another main difference in the spider is the fact that during the day, they won't attack you unless provoked, which is kind of cool in my opinion. Good tier. Squid. The squid swims around in the water, however, it doesn't drop food or anything besides ink sacs. Also, here's a fun fact, the squid is one of the only mobs that isn't affected by the dinner bone name tag, because they would look pretty much the same upside down. The squid will just kind of float around and not do too much. And apparently the community thought that we needed another retextured version, which makes complete sense. Bad tier. Strays. These are the cooler skeletons, temperature-wise. They only spawn in snow biomes, and their arrows do slowness damage, which can be really annoying if you happen to spawn in a snow biome. Strays aren't talked about too much, and I think that's for good reason. They were cool when they were first added to the game, but now they're just another random mob in the game. They're not a bad mob, they're just not a great mob. So I'll put them in the average tier. Striders. These mobs spawn in the nether, and they're a great travel method pre-elytra. If you equip them with a saddle and a warp fungus on a stick, then you can ride them on lava similar to a pig with a carrot on a stick. And if they go out of lava, they will get kind of cold and turn bluish purple, but it doesn't affect them too much. Good tier. Cats. These are the other pet mob in Minecraft, along with dogs and parrots. Cats come in a wide variety of breeds and colors, which can be good for cat lovers. However, I am not a cat lover, so I'm gonna have to give them a bad tier to make the cat lovers mad. Tadpoles. These are baby frogs that swim around and don't do too much. They come from frog eggs and they're not super interesting. They can be cool to keep in a fish tank, but they don't have many special properties. Lacking tier. Wolves, or more commonly known as dogs. These are the far superior Minecraft pets that follow you around everywhere you go. They have a collar that can be dyed any of the 16 Minecraft colors, which helps you tell your dogs apart. You can have your dogs sit down if you don't want them teleporting straight to you, or you can have them come with you and help you fight whatever mob you're attacking. And since they're infinitely more useful and better than cats, wolves deserve an amazing tier. Frogs. If your tadpoles have been sitting in your fish tank for quite a while and one day they look a little strange, then that's what we call a frog. Frogs come in three different colors depending on which biome the tadpoles matured in. Frogs were gonna eat fireflies, but then Mojang decided to be cowards and refused to add two pixels because they think that kids are gonna go around feeding fireflies to frogs. Anyways, frogs are a pretty cool mob. Good tier. Turtles. These mobs have a variety of interesting features, like the fact that they can lay physical eggs. And these eggs eventually hatch into baby turtles, which are comically small. Turtles can give you scooch, which can be made to the turtle helmet or brewed into the turtle master potion, which is a very underrated potion. Turtles are pretty cool, and they're a good mob to have in your fish tank if it's big enough. Good tier. Vexes. These are almost as annoying as phantoms. They spawn when the evoker decides that they don't like you. Vexes wield an iron sword, can fly, and phase through blocks, so they're fun to deal with. They can do an insane amount of damage, especially since the evokers spawn multiple at one time. And since Vexes don't count towards the raid mobs, you can still find them lurking around long after you defeat the raid. Bad tier. Vindicators. This is another raid mob that wields an iron axe and can kill you pretty quickly if you aren't paying attention. And if you get a name tag and rename it Johnny, then it will start going insane, unaliving pretty much anything in its path. They add some depth to the Illager family tree, but they're kind of background mobs and raids. Average tier. 
Wandering traders. So much potential, but just take one look at their trades and you'll understand. Bad tier. The Warden. This is a mini boss that was added in 1.19 to the Deep Dark. And I know you're not technically supposed to fight it, but where's the fun in that? They only drop a Skulk Catalyst, which doesn't do too much, but the Warden's a pretty unique mob. It's blind, so it can only hear your footsteps, which makes the mob a lot more dynamic. So I'll give the Warden an amazing tier. Sheep. This is one of the OG Minecraft mobs that has been around for quite a while. Sheep are an alright food source, but they're mainly used for their wool. Wool comes in 16 different colors and can be a good way to add color to your Minecraft builds. And if you name a sheep Jeb underscore with a name tag, then it will turn rainbow. However, when you shear them, they will only drop the color of the wool they originally were. Overall, I give sheep an amazing deer. Witches. It's kinda like the opposite of a villager. This mob can splash potions on you and heal itself by drinking potions. If a villager is struck with lightning, then it will get turned into a witch and switch teams. Witches drop a wide array of items that can be used to brew potions. They can also spawn during raids and help make raids more diverse and interesting to fight. Good tier. The Wither. This is my favorite boss in Minecraft and it's a lot better than the Ender Dragon. It has a more unique fight and you don't have to wait for hours for it to perch just so you can get two hits on it. The Wither has several phases and drops the Nether Star. The Nether Star could be used to craft bacon, which is an amazing item. Withers are a fun fight on Java, but on Bedrock Edition for some reason they happen to have twice the health, making it a really challenging fight. I'll put Withers in the amazing tier. Wither Skeletons These black skeletons are taller and more athletic than the white ones, and they spawn the Nether Fortresses. They only have a stone sword as their weapon, but when they hit you they will inflict the Wither debuff, which drains your health really quickly. The main feature of them is the fact that they have a small chance to drop the Wither Skeleton's skull when killed. And if you get three Wither Skeleton Skulls, then you can spawn the Wither which I talked about earlier. Wither Skeletons are an amazing tier. Zoglins. This is the overworld version of the Hoglin. Similar to how the Piglins turn into zombified Piglins when they're brought into the overworld, Hoglins turn into Zoglins. They deal quite a bit of damage, but they aren't too special aside from that. Average tier. Zombie Horses. If you haven't ever heard of these before, that's because they can't spawn naturally. It's not like the Illusioner where they can only be spawned with command blocks, because in creative mode they have their own spawn egg but zombie horses can't naturally spawn anywhere in survival mode for some reason. I feel like Mojang could have done a lot with this mob, but unfortunately they're still working on cooking up the worst mob vote mobs known to man. Lacking tier. Zombies. Another OG Minecraft mob. Along with creepers and pigs, zombies are one of the most recognizable mobs in Minecraft. Everyone has encountered a zombie if they've played Minecraft before. I mean, what can I say? Minecraft wouldn't be the same without them. Amazing tier. The Giant. This is a huge Minecraft mob that can only be spawned with commands similar to the Illusioner. They are extremely large, and at one point they were even in the game. But since they're no longer in the game, I can't really rank them too highly. So I'm going to give them a lacking tier. And finally, we have the Zombie Pigman. Or should I say, the Zombified Piglin. In the Nether update, Mojang changed its name to fit with their new pig mobs that they were adding, which does make sense. But if you take a normal Piglin and transport it to the overworld, wait a bit, then it will turn to the Zombified Piglin. They have all the same mechanics as the original Zombie Pigman, like how if you punch one of these mobs, they immediately tell their friends to chase after you and hunt you down. They definitely have a herd mentality. I'll give them a lacking tier because zombie pigmen were a lot better. Please subscribe. The script for this video is 6,000 words.